Hello everyone and welcome back to Suzerain. So in the last episode, we turned around and had to deal with our vice president, unfortunately, Peter Vecturn. He betrayed us on several levels. But now we have a new vice president in Gloria Tory, and she also brings with her the support of the conservatives. And we're going to need that support later on because we're facing some tough times, at least as far as political wise, we're facing tough times. Because, of course, we don't have a lot of support across the board because of the screwed up things that we did in the beginning as far as the emergency decree and things like that. However, we do have a strong economy, so that's looking pretty nice. And our budget has slightly taken a hit because of a small polio outbreak that we had, but we've contained it. So hopefully we won't have to deal with any setbacks on, on that front. We've stopped that in its tracks. But now we have other things to deal with, such as the political unrest Briefing on the increasing unrest among the populace. Lilius entered my office and took a seat. She was frowning intensely. She didn't talk at first, she just fixed me with a steady gaze. When she did speak up, it was in strained tones. Mr. President, we have a problem. Explain now. This just came in. Here, take a look. I took the document from her hands and started started reading it. The report was titled BFF, BFF Attack on Soul Dam. I looked up immediately after reading the title. Yes, you read that right. The Blutish Freedom Front has taken over Soul Dam. That dam currently provides 90% of electricity to Bergia and its neighboring regions. If they destroy the power station, I don't even want to think about the outcome. Thankfully, no casualties have been reported yet. We know that they have taken the staff as hostages. This is ridiculous. How can we let this happen? The dam was not necessarily guarded well. No one thought they would hit a power center. Mr. President, I'm afraid that's not all. With a simultaneous attack, the bluish terrorists have raided the governor's office in Dare and kidnapped, and kidnapped Governor Braun. They're holding him hostage as well. Carl Gracer is on his way here right now. He will tell us what he knows so far. Just then, there was a loud knock at the, on the door. Carl came in without waiting for an answer. He was clearly out of breath. Ah, there he is. He saluted me. Salute him back. Mr. President, I'm so sorry for being late. Carl, I already informed the President of the situation. Do you have any updates? We've just received the demands from the terrorists. He handed me the file he was holding the demands. I started reading the file. President Rain, in the name of peace, we have taken hold of the Soul Dam and the mayor of Dare is our hostage. The free people of Blutia have suffered enough under the tyranny of Swordland. Our villages were destroyed, our men and women assaulted, our children killed by our own government in the name of this dam. We the BFF are with the people. We, the BFF, always defend the downtrodden. We, the BFF, fight for freedom. We, the BFF, are not like the Swordish government. We know compassion and we believe in a chance of reconciliation between our people. That's why we are demanding a delegation from the Swordish government to negotiate the price of our freedom. We are ready to sit at the table as equals. Make no mistake, we also know that true freedom comes at a cost. We will not hesitate to sacrifice as many lives as it takes to achieve our goals. If our demands are not met, we will cut off electricity to the entirety of the Bergia and Nargis regions along with the mayor's head. Take this as your final warning. Yolok Bluderat. I handed the document to Lilius and she read it carefully. As I thought, Mr. President, the BFF is a threat against our nation. They must be completely eradicated. We will not negotiate with terrorists. Your orders, Mr. President. Search and destroy. Eliminate the enemies of the state. As you command. It's good to see that we are taking immediate action. Thank you, Mr. President. That's all I had for today. Thank you both. Come on, Carl. We're leaving. Lilius hurriedly left the room. Carl bowed to me. Mr. President, he followed after her. Okay, so yeah, that has turned into a shit show. 
Hopefully, it can turn out positively, though. Security Act. Sign or veto the Security Act that was approved by the Grand National Assembly. The Security Act. The lack of security due to, to the period of social upheaval calls for drastic measures proposed by the majority of the Grand National Assembly. Section 1 of the Security Act allows the use of force whenever deemed necessary. Section 2 orders that suspicious the suspicion-based arrest and confiscation can occur without warrants. Section 3 allows security forces to use their authority beyond the legal limits that are permissible if it ensures maintaining state security and by extension the general public. Yes. Definitely going to sign that. All right. We have one unread newspaper. President of Order. Okay. That's due to us just to us ah, to us signing the security bill it is really late at night so I apologize for messing up some things here all right chapter four checkmate and I think this might be the last chapter if I'm not mistaken I could be wrong but I think each chapter is supposed to be a year in the administration so yeah, I do think this might be the end or the last chapter. Oh, okay. Maybe not. <laughs> all right, let's see what we have in the news. Geopolitico. Hegel would take all the necessary steps. I'm guessing this is talking about his beef with Agnolia. Probably me too as well. All right, we don't have any news reports. We just have the stuff that's going on at Holsord. End of the day at home. Resident of the president of Swordland, Holsord. Oh, shit, the economy is going back down again. Great. It was raining as Sergei dropped me off at home after yet another grueling day of work. A guard held an umbrella over my head as I walked from the car to my front door. Inside, the house was completely dark. I flipped on the light in the kitchen to find a note from Monica. Sierra had called her in for a last minute women's rights meeting. She'd dropped Dana off at a friend's and left me some food for reheating. I took the pot out of the fridge. It was filled with an unidentifiable grayish looking stew. Evidently, Monica's excellent cooking had been the first casualty of her political career. I'll order some pizza. I called Sergey and asked him to pick me up a pizza for dinner. While I was waiting for him, I went into the living room to fix myself a drink. Suddenly, the phone rang. I went back to the kitchen and answered it. Frank's voice was on the other end. Oh, I thought Mom would pick up. Sorry, you're stuck with your old man. I didn't mean it like that. In, 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 ah, I didn't mean it that way. I just figured you'd be working. There was a long silence. Uh, I got that record you sent me. Not bad for old folks' music. Glad you liked it. Have you heard anything from Uncle Peter? No. Uh, okay. So messed up what he did. So, got a girlfriend yet? Uh, no, nah, I'll ask about school. It's fine. Really different from Sorlin, but I think I'm starting to fit in. Hmm. So, how do you find the land of capitalism? I mean, they're obviously doing something right. You must think so too, or you wouldn't have made that deal with Lesbia. An astute observation. Maybe you're learning something over there after all. Oh, I am. My head's been stuffed with swordish propaganda since the day I was born. Right now, I feel like I'm thinking clearly for the first time. Hmm. I'm happy, to, I'm happy you're opening your mind. Just stay away from Reefer. The doorbell rang. Sergey was here with my pizza. Good catching up with you, Frank. Yeah, okay. Bye. We both hung up. I let Sergey in. The pizza he'd brought was gargantuan. Sergey, would you like to join me for, for dinner? I think there's a football game on. Sorry, sir. Got to get back to my family. Sergey left. I ate my pizza alone by the flickering light of the television. 
wondering when Monica and Dana would go would get home. Oh, so sad. Police overwhelmed in remote cities. Oh, great. I gave you a bigger budget, and instead you get your ass kicked. Great. Police ready for operation in Erzurum. Nice to get the mayor back. Record number of female students in Gelsor. Nice, nice, nice. And private prisons increase revenue. Nice. So good. That'll help the budget. And I see it did go up a little bit. So, yeah. Starting to get some benefits from that. Whole sword post. Election campaign ramps up across Swordland. So, we're going to start getting into that now. Always great. Former VP not seen since dismissal. And now we have to deal with Peter Victurn. Not being seen. Like father, like son. Okay. Hmm. I guess they don't like my whole capitalist stance there. Okay, and they don't like my security package. Wonderful. Security Act threatens the economy. Oh, wonderful. I mean, I would assume that they would like the fact that I'm securing the nation and everything is turning out better. But, eh. Human Dignity Bill that was approved by the Grand National Assembly. Let's see what this is. The newly proposed bill will amend Section 3 of the 1923 Legal Transaction Act that allowed the legislation, the legalization of transactions which occur in non-registered businesses or other entities like single persons, if the parties deliver accurate documentation to the final authority. This created a legal loophole for prostitution. The Human Dignity Bill will protect common decency and prevent the violation of moral principles that occur in the act of prostitution by making it an illegal offense in which perpetrators are punishable by law. I'm sorry, what? The duly proposed bill will amend Section 3 of the 1923 Legal Transaction Act that allowed the legalization of transactions which occur in non-registered businesses or other entities like single persons if the parties delivered Accurate documentation to the financial authority. You created a legal loophole for prostitution. Hmm. Well, on the one hand, I do, I guess if I want to stick more to the conservative side, I can see the benefit of signing this. But on the other hand, this could also affect some businesses, so that might cause problems. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. I do need support, though. And I don't have as much wealth. It probably will help me out later on in the game. But, hmm, decisions. I guess I'll go ahead and sign the bill. I do need that conservative support, so... So it posts, traditional values are sordish law. So, they're happy about that. Okay. Let us move right along. Discussion on the internal, on the current internal affairs. A storm was on the horizon outside my window. The mood in my office was equally dark and a storm of a different kind was brewing inside. I straightened myself on the sofa and looked at Carl, who was sitting on the couch across from me, ready to give me the report from the Soul Dam. Sir, the operation has been successful. The government has been taken the governor has been taken out of the dam unharmed, and the armed re rebels at the scene were eliminated. Thanks to the well planned operation of the secret state police, we suffered zero casualties. He puffed himself up. Also, one of the rebels who died at the operation was identified to be their current leader. We'll soon eradicate their group completely, Mr. President. Have no worries. At this very moment, our special teams are raiding numerous suspected BFF hideouts to find the smaller groups before they can reorganize. Good. I want them all gone. For good. Of course, sir. You can count on us. Was there anything else? That's all for now, sir. I'll get going. He stood up, bowed, and left the room. All right, so that turned out okay in the end. We saved the governor, and we're getting rid of the BFF. 
Always good. Rumberg plane warned inside airspace. Oh boy. Things are going to start wrapping up with Rumberg, I see. And we have one newspaper here. Let's see. Hosts or Pulse. Successful dam operation. So, that might help me out in the polls and stuff. So, you know. Okay. Okay. Fair luxury tax, tax act and a alcohol tax. All right. The assembly proposes an amendment. All I see is plus two government budget. <laughs> the assembly proposes an amendment to section six of the tax code of 1949. The FT, the FLTA seeks to improve the fairness of the taxation system and increase tax revenue. Section one sets a 15% tax rate, which will be imposed on items of luxury goods class determined by the ministry of economy. This economy, this encompasses jewelry, furs, sports cars, yachts and private planes. Section two of the amendment will establish a 10% estate tax for the condition for the conditions of purchase, sale and transfer of property, in particular in inheritance situations. So I will definitely sign that so we can help get this budget back. And of course that kind of negatively infect the economy. But again, we need to kind of pull ourselves out of that recession a little bit and get some money back into our budget so we can go ahead and kind of uh, invest in other projects as well. Alcohol Tax Act. This will add plus one to the budget. The GNA proposes the ATA to socially deter the excessive amount of alcohol consumption. Section one will impose a 20% tax of, on the sale of alcohol products sold in the country. Section 3 establishes a 25% import tax on foreign alcohol products. I will sign that because, again, budget. Okay, that actually didn't negatively affect the economy. So, but it did give us a budget of one. So, that's always nice. So, we're doing pretty good now. And again, the economy is kind of going back into the shitter. But hopefully with the induction, uh, the infrastructure project uh, finishing up, We'll get some positive results back from that. So, let's see. Rain to put a lid on alcohol consumption, and luxury is now taxable. Gotta love taxes. Emergency call on an escalating situation. Oh boy, what is this? I was woken up in the middle of the night by a call from the Ministry of Defense. Due to the sensitivity of the information, I had to be urgently briefed in person. I put on my clothes as fast as I could. I rushed downstairs and opened the door. Sergey was waiting for me. Mr. President, this was this way to the car, please. We got into the car and made our way to the Ministry of Defense building without a word. I arrived and was directed downstairs. I came to set came to a set of large doors and quickly read the sign above them. The sign read War Room. The dimly lit room was filled with cutting edge equipment, the latest video screens, long range radio electronics, and other devices used for communication, present, presentation, and planning. The centerpiece of the room was a large round table with the coat of arms of Swordland engraved on it. David, Lucien, Vulcan, and Isof were already deep in discussion. Mr. Lankia, I advise caution. Going to war wouldn't help anyone. We must maintain peace in Swordland and Eastern Marcopa at all costs. Oh, I got allies all over the board. I will go at Roomberg. Oh, they can get all the hands right now. What do you expect us to do? Sit down and do nothing? They're testing us. We must respond immediately. Otherwise, they will think we're weak. Status report now. Mr. President, thank you for coming in at this late hour. There's a situation. Vulcan, please go ahead and provide your report. Mr. President, approximately 20 minutes ago, Roomberg downed one of our planes with anti-aircraft fire from the ground. The pilot was declared KIA. The last recorded position of the plane was inside Swordish airspace. General Kruger, I mean no offense, but are we absolutely sure that that is the case? Are you sure this happened within our borders? No offense taken. Here are the lo locations on the map and the report from the airbase. He pointed to several markers on the map. To answer your question, yes, we're absolutely sure. You can see here on the map that the plane was down approximately 10 kilometers inside our borders. We've calculated the, tra the trajectory of the gunfire 
when they started firing when our plane was within our border. The plane was down near Hogan. How dare they? This is an attack against our sovereignty. Mr. President, I must insist. We need to be calm. We must maintain peace. I agree. They're trying to lure, lure us into their trap. We have enough military power, power to contest against this violation of internal law, international law. We should attack and down one of their planes in retaliation. Otherwise, we'll look weak and it will lead to more casualties. We can't look weak. If we appear weak, they will jump on the opportunity. We must order a military retaliation immediately. I agree with the general. Mr. President, our army is ready to do whatever it takes to protect Swordland. Gentlemen, before it comes to that point, we can prevent further bloodshed by using diplomacy. Room fell silent before Isos finally spoke up. Mr. President, what are your orders? Hmm. I won't start a war with them just yet, but they will get an eye for an eye. We will retaliate with equal force to display our strength. Sorlin cannot afford to look weak. Very well. If there's if there's to be, be a retaliation, we need to be extremely careful. They will seek every opportunity to blame us for it. We can't further escalate the situation and destabilize the region. We need to prevent a war at all costs. I'm saying this as a man who has lived through too many years of war. We are not the ones who escalated the situation. They were first. Mr. President, I assure you, they wouldn't dare attack us for that. They know that we are far superior. This will send a strong message. I will send word for the start of a military operation. Our target will be their warplanes at an airbase near the border. I still think a peaceful solution would be more beneficial, but of course, I don't have the military experience and insight Mr. Lankia has. I will begin my task immediately, Mr. President. If you excuse me now, I must talk to the military command to relay the orders. Before he left the room, he saluted. I'll bring the paperwork. I saw returned with the paperwork for the order and showed me where to sign. And I signed off on the operation. Now that the paperwork is done, I have an idea, Mr. President. I think we should hold a military parade to display our strength. I'm with Mr. Lankia on this one. This should should work well as a deterrent and will come in handy as a tool to de-escalate the situation. That's a good idea. Simple and effective without causing any ruckus. That makes sense. Organize the military parade. Understood. And that's all, Mr. President. I will keep you updated on the situation. For now, have a good night's sleep. You'll need it couldn't sleep at all that night oh boy and the sounds of the war drums starts beating all right and the whole sword post has reported on this situation let's see what we got going on here urgent meeting on potential alliances I was sitting right across from David in the white room after he scheduled an ur uh, urgent meeting, Jesus, I knew that the matter must have been serious. He insisted on waiting for Isoff and Lucian, so we did. Lucian entered the room with Isoff by his side. Mr. President, we came as fast as we could. Mr. President, Mr. Whiskey, what is going on? David cleared his throat. Welcome, everyone. Due to the potential ramifications, I wanted everyone to be present for this meeting. We have received an envoy from Arcasia. They are requesting a state visit. Judging from the current climate, it is not hard to see what this is about. Edo is always trying to expand its influence after all. They will most likely try to convince us to join. In addition, as part of this state visit, Dwight Walker will, of course, meet with you in person, Mr. President. Okay, the President of, I was about to say the United States, Arcasia, would like to come and visit us. Hmm. There's a lot we could gain from this visit. With all due respect, are you out of your mind? Mr. Lankia, let him continue. This is madness. We cannot even consider accepting this. I bet he will come asking for cooperation under the guise of enforcing their demands to join Edo. This will antagonize half of the world against us. We're going to be at the forefront of the battle. 
if you're approaching this from the perspective of national defense, then don't. We're in better shape than we were ever before. I assure you, we don't need any outside help. Let's see what he wants first. I will decide when I talk to him. We need to be careful. Mr. Whiskey, we rely a lot on you as you are an expert in your field with a proven track record. What's your take on this? What do you think is the right action? World tension is increasing rapidly, Mr. President, and I'm worried about the future. One misstep and the whole world might be engulfed in chaos. I'm afraid it might not be possible to stay neutral in this case. Our geopolitical position is simply too important. Soon we will have to take a side. If we don't pick a side, we may end up right in the middle of a potential conflict. I am of the opinion that this is an opportunity that we can't miss. It all boils down to your decision. But I, but I say we should at least listen to what Dwight Walker has to say. All right, very well, accept their offer. I will send our response immediately. Then there's a tiny detail we need to get over with, get, get over with it. How should we welcome their delegation, sir? Hmm. I did make an extravagant uh, thing once before, and honestly, it just seemed ridiculous. So, I'll do a military welcome, is in order. They need to see our might. Yeah. Maybe? Hmm. Now that I think about it, should I do this? Because I really didn't like the extravagant one I did before. It just seemed ridiculous. It kind of reminded me of when I went to Wayland and then there was all the hoopla with the president there and it just, it, it was, seemed kind of stupid. So, a military welcome might be better. Hmm. At the same time, I don't want to be in Edo just because of the military aspect. I want to be in Edo because of the economic aspect as well. So... Hmm. Military welcome or extravagant? Jeez, it's actually pretty tough. I'll do a military welcome, cause I mean we're we're on pretty good terms with them, so I'm pretty sure they'll offer us a trade deal anyway. So, as you wish, I've taken a note. I think that is all for today. Thank you all for attending. As we dispersed, the world map hanging on the wall in the room caught my attention. I walked over to it. How often were the lines on the world map redrawn over the recent decades? What about the future? Okay. Oh, and we immediately have the state visit with President Walker. Gates of the Maroon Palace. The door of the car opened and flashes went off. Dwight Walker, President of Arcasia, Head of Edo, came out of the car, smiling and waving at the enormous crowd that gathered. It was not every day an Arcasian president came to visit Sorlin, after all. Next to the maroon carpet to the palace, Swordish troops were lined up. Swordish warplanes flew above our heads, painting the sky with the colors of the Swordish flag. As soon as President Walker stepped on the carpet, all of the soldiers performed a hard salute. Cel celebratory gunshots were fired. Trumpets started playing a Swordish march. Along with Monica, I started walking over to meet him midway. Finally, I was in reaching distance to one of the most powerful men in the world. He looked at Monica first, bowed and kissed her hand for a second longer than I liked. Mr. Rain, if you told me I would get to meet with your lovely wife, I would have come sooner. I'm charmed, Miss Rain. Oh my, thank you, Mr. Walker. It's a pleasure to meet with you. All right, Kennedy, back off. No. The pleasure is all mine, Miss Rain. I hope your wife and the family is well. They are very well, Miss Rain. Thank you. Unfortunately, they couldn't make it here today. And who do we have here? Mr. President, it is so good to finally meet with you. We shook hands. It is really good to see you, Mr. President. I assure you, the feeling is mutual. That's why I am here, in fact. On the way to the entrance, we, st we stopped in front of General Vulcan, who was in charge of the troops. General, 
President Walker saluted Vulcan and the soldiers. They saluted back. As soon as our inspection finished, we entered the palace. Mr. President, one would think you are preparing to go to war with me instead. He laughed. And I laughed. We started walking towards the reception hall to the, in the palace. Our path was cleared of people at once. He was simply looking around at the extraordinary interior design of the Marine Palace. Statues, paintings, and various ornaments filled both sides of the corridor. We passed the corridor and entered the reception hall. The crowd inside was composed of various politicians and state figures. Upon our entry, they started clapping. Clapping, dry martinis were handed to both of us. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you President Walker. People started clapping. Thank you, President Rain. It is really good to be here. And thank you everyone for the warm welcome. With another thunderous round of applause, the jazz band started playing. President Walker and I separated and started mingling with the crowd. The reception was in full swing. After some time chatting with the attendees, President Walker approached us. He bowed before my wife. Miss Rain, can I call you Monica? She looked over at me before smiling at him. Yes, of course. If I can call you Dwight. He took her hand and they started dancing. I turned around to talk to the waiter. I was into my third martini when I heard a whistle. I turned around and saw Monica dancing very close with President Walker. All eyes in the room were on them. President Walker grabbed Monica's waist. Uh, President Walker, why don't we have a chat somewhere quiet? Right, right when we were getting to the good part. Fine, let's have a chat, you douche. I mean, yes, you are the most powerful country on the face of this earth, but Jesus Christ, manners. President and I swapped our drinks for early maroon 30 year olds. I knew a special spot. With our drinks at hand, we went down the stairs to the basement. Gradually, the music and the sound of the party started to fade away. We arrived at a cozy little corner office with not much inside other than a table and comfortable chairs. He took a seat and I followed suit. He pulled out two cigars. You take one. He pulled out a repo lighter and lit my cigar before lighting his own. We clinked our glasses and took a sip. Ah, this is a really good one. Very smoky. I like it. Ever had an early maroon before? He took a puff from his cigar, filling the small room with smoke. Definitely miles better than Vogslandian whiskey. But I like lesbian whiskey more. It pairs better with the cigars. You see, Mr. Rain, whiskeys are a little bit like countries. Some are stronger, some are weaker, some are older, some are younger. Many are complex, but sometimes simply, sometimes simple is the best. I personally like stronger whiskeys in general. That's why I like this one. Yes, it's definitely promising. But whatever you drink in the end, it all boils down to your own taste. I assure you, Mr. Rain, my sense of taste is very refined. What type of whiskey do you like? Hmm. I like stronger ones. A man after my own heart. He tugged at his tie to loosen it a little. You know why I'm here. I want to make you an offer. The type I can't refuse. Of course not. This is an offer, not an order. Listen closely. Times are changing. And so is the balance of the world. Soon, instead of a fractured world, we will see a more united world. There is us, Edo, against them. Besides, your embargo on United Cantana makes Edo the only side that you can align with. I want you by our side, the winning side. I think there is much we can achieve together and you have shown me the proof. The friend of Lesbia is our friend as well. If you accept, I would like to extend to you a warm welcome to Edo as a full member state. This is of course comes this of course comes along with lots of privileges and responsibilities. In Edo, we protect each other. We have a mutual defense clause in the cause in the case of war. Join us, Mr. Rain, and you will have the entire backing of Edo. Soldiers, jet fighters, warships, whatever you like. During peacetime you will see the effects even more. 
Our combined production output will benefit both Sorlin and Ada. We will have free trade zone agreements, free visa access, investments, you name it. All I ask in return is mutual lo loyalty to one another in the pact. The Swordish Armed Forces will be a member of the Edo military structure. All branches, be it Air, Navy, Army, will collaborate with the Alliance Network. We will provide assistance and training for free. Our armies will learn how to fight together and be stronger than ever in the face of the Melanievis threat. To make history here, tonight, what do you say? Hmm, I say aye. I accept, Mr. Walker, and you join Ato. That's what I like to hear. We stood up and shook hands. Welcome to Ato, Mr. Rain. Welcome home. Cheers to newfound partnerships. We clinked our glasses and, and downed the remaining whiskey. Now it's starting to taste better. Let's go upstairs, Mr. Rain. We have much to discuss. More importantly, we need to celebrate. Besides, I have a few more dance moves to show off. Hopefully not with my wife, you douche. All right, so we have a bit of a change here now. We have modernized Air Force now. After a large, after a large modernization air effort, the Air Force of Sorlin is able to rival most Air Forces, if not all. So yeah, and we have a modernized Army as well. Don't have the modernized Navy though. I guess we're just too far behind in that particular case. All right. Let me see, we have British protests quelled, and as far as diplomacy goes, we are a strategic alliance member. Sortland is a strategic is a strategic member of a large and important international alliance, increasing prestige and influence. And we have Arcasian military support. Unfortunately, we also have Arcasian influence as well. And we have the embargo against United Contana, but we've had that for a while, so yeah. Things are changing here. The whole sort of post administration announces Swordland's ADO membership. Geopolitical, Swordland joins ADO. All right. This will definitely help our economy too in the end. So yeah, Let's see what we got going on here. Call with Evelyn Vecturn. Oh crap, forgot about that. Midnight. I was in the living room watching the tail end of a news report when I heard the phone ring. I sighed and walked over to the phone, wondering who could be calling me this late. I picked it up. Hello, who is this? I heard a soft voice from the other end. Hello, Anton. This is Evelyn. Sorry for calling so late. Uh, something wrong? Yes. No, I don't know, actually. All right, let's talk. It's about Peter. It's been weeks since he and that woman ran away, hasn't it? He's not some sort of escape artist. He in he's instantly recognizable. And you said you had your best men on the case. Please stop looking for Peter. I would really appreciate it if you stopped looking for Peter. Be honest, Anton. What really happened to him? Everything I know, I already said at my press conference. Then maybe something else is going on that neither of us knew about. Honestly, I couldn't be more excited to be rid of the man, but I'll never get closure if I can't track him down. I understand. I have a few journalist contacts left over from my whole sword post days. I'm thinking of asking them to investigate this. No need to get them involved. I'll do it myself. All right, let me know what you can find. Hmm. I never had any idea he was cheating on you before this, by the way. You know I would have come to you about it. <laughs> I'm sure you would have. Her voice sounded tired. Get some sleep, Evelyn. Goodbye. The line dropped. As I put down the phone, Monica sleepily approached with a glass of water in her hand. Who was that? Is everything all right? It was Evelyn. She got some crackpot theories about what happened to Peter. 
I'm surprised she still cares about him. <laughs> She's a middle-aged woman. What kind of life will she have without a husband? Jesus. She was a good influence on him. For a while, she made her way upstairs. I went to my private study, picked up the phone and called Carl. The phone rang for only a few seconds. Yes, Mr. President? Evelyn's getting suspicious. As we discussed, Mr. Vec Turn has been well and properly disposed of. Evelyn's going to investigate this, Carl. Would you like her to be disposed of as well? Good lord, no. Here's what I would suggest. We still have Mr. Vec Turn's wedding ring and a sample of his handwriting. It would be fairly easy to plant evidence of his death by suicide. That would be much appreciated. I'll begin right away, sir. He hung up. I put away the phone and went down to the bedroom to get some sleep. As I was eating breakfast the next morning, the phone rang. I picked up. It was Carl. Good morning, Mr. President. That was fast. Indeed, sir. His wedding ring, a half-empty bottle of pills, and a handwritten note were planted on a bridge overlooking the Unger River. Do you think Evelyn will be convinced? The man was obviously in an unstable state before. I don't think it's a stretch of the imagination. Hmm. I'll tell Evelyn the news. Thanks again for your help and discretion. Of course, sir. Carl hung up. With a heavy heart, I started mentally rehearsing what I would say to Evelyn. Oh boy, the lies we tell and the webs we weave. Alright, Linkirk, Salmon left rotting in storage. That's unfortunate. It's gonna cause problems. Let's see, Marble reported to soon be a ghost town. Jesus, okay. Because of the lack of goods flowing in. That's unfortunate. Increased crime and racial violence in Sarna. Really, police? What are you doing? What are you doing? So early today, former Vice President's suicide confirmed. So that's the front page of Sorland today. And the Lechaven Times, Peter Vecturn commits suicide. It's unfortunate. All right, what do we have here? Peter Vecturn's funeral. Read the report from Hosor. Peter Vector nowhere to be found. Alright. Alright. Peter Vector has passed away, and we can honor him with a state funeral. Or a regular funeral. Well, since nothing really came out about the whole treasonous affair, we will give him a state funeral. I could at least not be a complete douche. Right. And now we shall attend the funeral of Peter Vector, and I think after that we shall stop that there. Let me see what time it is. Yeah, I think we'll go ahead and wrap it up after that. So, entrance to the cemetery, early. Our convoy pulled up to the gates of the National Cemetery in early, Peter's hometown. Monica and Dana were beside me in the car. The news of Peter's death had hit Frank especially hard. Rather than attend the funeral, he had taken a few days off from school to have time to himself. Monica looked numb and empty. Dana appeared to be deep in thought. But how did Uncle Peter die? Why won't anyone tell me? Monica looked like she was about to cry. He... It doesn't matter, sweetheart. She turned her head to look out the window, hiding her tears. I hugged Monica. She hugged me back tightly. Papa, tell me the truth. You will understand when you're older. That's not fair. I'm almost 12. The driver's window rolled down. We have arrived, Mr. President. My, my deepest condolences. I know you and Mr. Vector are very close. Thank you, Sergey. 
Sergey went outside and opened our door. As soon as we stepped out, camera flashes went off. Evelyn Vectern was waiting for us. Upon seeing her, Monica ran up to her and they hugged. Evelyn, I'm so sorry. How are you holding up? So-so, it's hard to play the bereaved widow, knowing the kind of man he really was. But still, we were married almost 20 years, Monica. And the way he died is just too sudden. They hugged once again. Evelyn wiped her tears and patted Dana on the head before turning to me. I can't believe he's gone. Even though I orchestrated it, can't believe it. I know there's nothing either of us could have done, but I still can't help feeling responsible for this. It's not your fault, Evelyn. Evelyn swallowed hard, her eyes filled with resolve. All right, let's go. The four of us, Evelyn, Monica, Dana, and I, took our places towards the front of the crowd. From afar, we heard the sound of military boots approaching. A soldier was leading a group with a large framed photo of Peter in his hands. Behind him followed other soldiers, marching alongside a cart with a carved goat on the front. On top of the cart, wrapped in a sordish flag, was the coffin of Peter Vectern, the fourth vice president of Swordland. The group stopped in front of us. They lifted the coffin up off the cart and laid it down on a platform. One of the soldiers took the flag, folded it, and presented it to me. I walked behind the podium to deliver my speech. Today we mourn Peter Vectern, the fourth vice president of Swordland, and my brother. Our bond was not a bond of blood, it was something stronger. It was a bond of friendship and camaraderie. He was there with me from the very beginning. He swore he would support our cause until the end. Though we did not always see eye to eye, I owe Peter everything. I wouldn't be president if not for him. Never before Swordland had a vice president like Peter. Never again will it. Farewell, brother. You will be missed. Amid the applause, I went back to join Monica and Dana. As I walked past Evelyn, she mouthed the words, Thank you. Trumpets cut through the silence. Stern-looking soldiers formed a line and held their rifles in front. One after another, ten shots rang out. With each shot, I shuddered. I had known Peter for almost thirty years. The time we spent together flashed back before my eyes. The good memories and the bad ones. All of it. It didn't matter anymore. He was gone. Because of me. I felt a tug on my left arm. Are you crying? Surprised, I checked my face. My eyes were wet. Yes. She hugged my leg. Come on, Dana. Let's go. The coffin was fully lowered and the tombstone placed. The crowd began dispersing. Leave a bottle of whiskey on the grave. I left the bottle on the grave. Early 30 year old. His favorite. I stayed there by myself for another half hour. The sun finally set after painting the sky blood red. All right, so it's actually out that Peter, uh, air quote, killed himself, and I totally had nothing to do with it, and we attended his funeral, got all emotional and stuff. I am a piece of shit, actual piece of shit. So. All right, the whole sword post is covering the vice president's funeral. <laughs> wow. Wow, radical. Wow. I mean, I know I killed the guy, but Jesus. That's fucked. That is that is real messed up. All right. So, in the next episode, we have a late night at the rain house. Oh, well, I guess I could go ahead and do that. Let me go ahead and do that. Then I'll go ahead and wrap things up.
After weeks of late nights, Monica, Sierra, and the Women's Rights Commission had succeeded in presenting their bill before the assembly, only for it to fail. I left work early, expecting my wife would be in need of comfort, but it had been hours since I had gotten home, and she still wasn't there. I was dozing on the couch after yet another frozen TV dinner when I heard the key turn, turn in the lock. Monica stumbled into the hall. Honey, I'm home. Uh, kiss her. I kissed her. Her breath smelled like gin. I was just having a few drinks with Sierra. We were so close to winning, Anton. Those goddamn assembly pricks ruined it all. She collapsed onto the couch and buried her head in her hands. <laughs> you could have invited me to the commiseration session. Oh, you would have found it boring. And somebody had to look after Dana. I believe you're turning into a politician, Miss Rain. Get used to it, baby. Seriously, Anton, this is what I want to do. I've never felt so alive. Show her the framed photo you took from your old office. I opened my briefcase and pulled out the photograph I had taken from my old office on that fateful night with Peter. Oh, it's actually spelled like Peter that time. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at us. Who would have thought we would wind up as Sorlin's most powerful couple? Oh, I always had an idea. We stayed curled up on the couch till late, talking and reminiscing about old times. Until... Oh god, what's gonna happen now? Voxlandian Navy spotted in full force in Helgeland. Oh great, that's, that's nice. So Voxlandian is pulling stuff. Great. What do we got going on over here? Rumbergian plane has been shot. Isof Lankia reports that a Rumbergian warplane was shot down by anti-aircraft upon violating the Swordish airspace. According to the report of the general staff, the plane was flying over the town of Haugen inside Swordish borders and did not retreat upon warning. What do we got here? And we have a one-on-one -on -one interview from Kai Root. Lucien Galad organized an interview for the presidency on the internationally renowned one-on-one, -on -one, the famous journalist Thomas Thomas Sacker will be asking questions. The crew of one-on-one -on -one and Thomas Sacker will arrive next week in La Chaven from Kairut. And we have the Rain 57 campaign advertisement and Citizens Mobility Act. Interesting, interesting. I kind of want to go ahead and just finish those. All right, yeah, we know about this already. Oof. All right, so in the next episode, we will tackle the 57 campaign advertisement and the Citizens Mobility Act of 1957. So yeah, we're starting the campaign season again. Will we actually win re-election? It's gonna be rough. It's gonna be real hard, because in fact, I don't have that much wealth this time around. Last time around, I think I had like a wealth of like six or something like that. So I had a lot more, I had a lot more, I could put out a lot more ads and stuff like that. So it's going to be interesting to see how things play out. Hopefully I'll have enough support. We'll see. But if you like the video, like the video. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe. I will have more things in the future and I have plenty of things for you to watch in the meantime. So yeah, we're getting real close to the end and I hope things play out very well. But we shall see. It actually might not be as many episodes as I thought. It might be like maybe two more episodes, actually. So, yeah. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.